Cage is leaning back way too much. Well, yeah, it's leaning back a little bit. I'm going to have to move it forward just slightly and tip it forward just slightly or get the ass end up on something. Yeah. And then figure a way to mount it. All right. Um, I got this pilot bushing today from uh, auto parts so I'll be able to secure that I think I'm just gonna put a plate on the bottom and secure it to the plate with this u-bolt here and what else oh I got this this is a centrifugal clutch one inch shaft that fits that motor so this clutch will fit that motor and that'll make it semi-automatic so I could have the transmission in third gear, fourth gear, reverse, it don't matter and if you let off the throttle it'll just be like an automatic so I won't need any clutch of an automatic clutch and a manual transmission which should be pretty cool these, no these clutches are a little bit noisy, they make a little bit noise but I'm just working with what I got right now so Yeah, pretty soon I will have to address this motor because it's been sitting around. See all the dust? It's been sitting around and the gas tank when is bone dry and it's got a little bit of rust in it. So I'm going to have to do something about that motor. I might do a whole, a whole video or a whole separate uh, video on that motor, tuning it up, getting it running, and possibly modifying it but that's where I'm at right now I don't got too much too much to report got the clutch got the bushing and I got the cage just temporarily mocked up up front or the roll bar temporarily mocked up up front I think the engine is going to be is going to be up above yeah it's going to be up above so the shafts uh, the shafts are not going to be in line. The engine shaft is going to be above the transmission shaft and driven with a belt. So I've determined I've determined that the outside of the pulley, the pulley is here. This has been added on or welded on, but anyway, the pulley itself is It's three inches on the the outer diameter, so I should require a six inch pulley on the transmission somewhere around there, maybe a five or six inch. I want it to be bigger than three, so I want to gear it down slightly and if I go from three inch to six inch, it should um it should slow down my speed and multiply my torque by 50% or double maybe 100% I'm not sure <laughs> it's going from 3 inch to 6 inch so instead of driving it direct like like an engine would be on a car gear it down halfway so if this transmission is, is meant to go let's say uh, 80 kilometers per hour or 100 kilometers per hour or 60 miles an hour at 3,000 RPMs and that rear end is the same that rear axle is out of a truck and it's geared to go similar automotive speed so let's say 3,000 RPMs and 100, 100 kilometers or 60 mile an hour so this machine is not going to be going that fast and it's not going to be that powerful so if I gear it down 50% or from three inch to six inch that should uh, double my torque and half the speed so at three thousand rpms this thing might go fifty kilometers instead of a hundred 
but I'll have better gears or yeah a more favorable gear ratio and I don't really want this thing going 100 kilometers an hour anyway because I'll kill myself so I'm gonna gear it down 50% from between the engine and transmission so uh, I've really been racking my brain about how I'm gonna mount the ass end of this cage here this is where the cage mounts above the wheel well on the Jeep but since it's not on a Jeep anymore I'm still trying to figure out how I'm gonna mount it so I found these here and these are uh, I think they're off of a swing set or a teeter-totter there's two of them and they bolt down with one bolt on each end and there's a spot here for a round pipe to go through and there's a bolt clamp down below that sort of clamps things together so my neighbor said to do, to take another chunk of 2 by 3 and build it up build it up here but I was a little worried about that about any flimsiness the cage is not really flimsy at all it's, it's pretty strong uh, it'll be even stronger when it's bolted down up front so maybe I'll do both maybe I'll do this triangle with a pipe going across and the pipe can tie into here I have to slide this back here but that's probably where I'm gonna drill my hole so I've just been thinking and guessing I have no plans my dogs hyperventilating Ryder chill out buddy Relax. He's got a fur coat on and it's hot today and he doesn't know how to take it off. <laughs> Poor guy. Anyway, um Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Cause I just I was like, should I do it this way? Should I do it this way? So I'm just I might just do both. I might have a, a post underneath and the triangle or I'm not sure. But I'm just gonna go ahead and drill some holes and start doing it. What are you doing, buggy? <laughs> I see you down there. Alright. Working on the friggin' homemade junk buggy. The DIY... UTV. Hey, buddy. <laughs> and uh, it's time to get this friggin' motor going. Okay, so there's like one bolt in the bottom, very bottom of the bowl here of the carburetor, 10 mil, and I took it out, and it's just full of powdery, I guess it's dried out fuel. Probably, the, like I said, probably the ethanol stuff. That's why uh, small engines, you're not supposed to use any more than 10% ethanol. That's what it says right on the fuel on the fuel cap of the fuel, of the fuel tank. So I took this here and I banged it out, and all that all that crud came out of there, pretty bad. So I'm gonna have to soak this and clean it. Well, now that I got the uh, fuel passage cleaned out, I had to take that fuel switch apart, which I didn't want to do, but it was necessary. So, I got the fuel passage cleaned out now and working, both of them. There's one that goes f from the inlet to the switch, and there's another one that goes from the switch to the jet. Or no, from the switch to the bowl. Yeah. So anyway, the bowl was full of crap, I think I showed you earlier, and I just took a little tiny uh, wire brush, oops, 
I just took a little tiny wire brush and uh, by hand and I just cleaned it out by hand Ugh. and then I drop it on the ground like like a moron anyway uh, looks good on the outside there's a little bit of there's a couple of rust pits and spots starting on the inside but there's not too much I can do about that and uh, if, as long as I keep fuel in it it should be fine carburetors in good shape aside from uh, aside from that fuel passage that was clogged but I got that fixed so now I can start putting the carb back together maybe hear that fucking piece of shit maybe hear it run Frig boys, I really need a cameraman or a tripod or something. I guess I do have a little tripod for my, yeah, I do have a little tripod I should be using. Anyway, I turned on the fuel, and as soon as I turned the fuel on, the fuel, I seen it start running, and you can see it in there, so the carb's probably full of fuel now, which is good. Um, I noticed that the fuel is labeled on to the right, and that is accurate. And the choke is labeled on to the right, and that is not accurate because the choke comes on when you slide it to the left. So I don't know, that sticker is wrong. But anyway, this thing hasn't run in about two years. So I think she's ready to, I think she's ready to fire. How am I going to hold it down? How am I going to do this? Huh. I'm going to have to hold it, and it's got high compression. Make sure that the kill switch is on. And all the wires are good. I'll probably step on the exhaust. It's not hot yet. <laughs> it will be, though. Oh, this is not good, boys. Put a little bit of fuel in the tank. The tank's still a little bit crusty inside, but filters should should help. Get it on the compression stroke here. Ugh, need to hold the motor down somehow. First fucking pull. First fucking pull. No way. <laughs> Fired up on the first pull. Right on. Well, uh, she might have to warm up before I can turn the choke off. But, that's good. She runs. It's kind of quiet, too. Well, it's not quiet, but it's not loud. Right on. I like that kind. Okay, I grinded off. The rivets and I took the screwdriver and pried this front piece off there's actually three pieces and uh, these two are, are sandwiched in between the center hub and that center hub that's the, the piece I want that's the only piece I want actually <sighs> and it fits on the transmission nicely and I can probably put a attach a pulley to that. I was going to uh, put a one inch pulley on there, but it's not quite right. It's supposed to be a one inch shaft, but it seems like the pulley has a little bit of slop into it. And I guess this is uh, something in there. Anyway, I guess this is the way to go. Because it'll fit nice and tight on the spline and you don't have to worry about it spinning a keyway or cutting a keyway or anything like that. And I think also I have a pulley here somewhere that fits onto that hub. If I can get it to stay there somehow, you stay still.
Let me tell ya. She's hot. I can't hold it. But... The welds aren't that great. See if I can focus. Clearly my flux core welds are not the best. But... But I made it. But zero fox. Zero fox. Get her done. Zero fox, get her done. Are you a fox? No, you're a dog. That's what the fox that's what the fox said. Oh man, she's so hot. I get a lot of splatter on my um on my flux core welds. Big time terrible. I don't know why. Most of those little tiny beads they just knock off and like I didn't weld any of them. They just splatter off, so I'm not sure if that's from the flux core. I need to get some argon gas and some real MIG wire. Might be like friggin' night night and day difference. Anywho, it's a little bit hot, but it fits on there, so I can uh, run a belt. So I can run a belt to the transmission. Since it's so friggin' hot, might be able to do it like this. Yeah. It's not perfect, just like everything else I do. But as long as those welds hold up, I might do some more. I might do some more because I only welded on two sides of the cross, of the clutch cross on the other side, so I can probably do some more. Wonder if this thing will fire up again. First try again today. I found uh, <clears throat> I had this fuel line. I think I had it like that, or I don't know. I have it. It's just sitting there for now. But I only poured a little bit of fuel in the tank when I first tried it, and it was it was getting air in the line because my line was up a little bit high and uh, the fuel was a little bit low but I poured a little more fuel in it there since <clears throat> see if I can hold this thing down get her on compression here oh, there she is Vibrating around. Little blue dune buggy. Oh my goodness. Um, I put the transmission back into position. Transmission in position. Friggin' right, so that kind of rhymes a little bit. I wrote that song. You're welcome. Anyway. Put the transmission back in position where she friggin' goes. And as if by some friggin' magical serendipity, as if by some magical mistake. See if I can get the shot there. Everything fits in there. Like in the bell housing of the transmission. Everything fits. The new pulley fits. This clutch fits. 
they're they're about between half inch to an inch apart probably a little bit closer than that but I can put uh, when I build the plate for the engine I can build the plate up a little bit or put its washers under the engine or space it up slightly can't space it up too much because the bell housings right there the roof of the bell housing what I was going to do or <clears throat> what I thought I was I was going to have to do I thought I was going to have to cut a notch in the bell housing or I was going to remove the bell housing completely but that didn't work because it's it's a part of the the gear case it holds the gears in too so if I can get it to tuck in there and still be able to work on it and still be able to change the belt then that's pretty cool because it's a nice scatter shield otherwise uh, otherwise I'll probably put one a notch in the top not not too big man that's a weird looking combination small engine automotive transmission That's a weird looking combination. It's a slithery serpent. You can't see him, but he's not very big. He's not very big, is he? Close up shot. Well, guys, I friggin' I did a thing. I did something. 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 So I've got my engine just sitting here, and I need to build a plate that will tuck down inside of this angle iron knot up on top like that. Either a, a plate or um, a couple of motor mounts. And it's going to go somewhere around here. A little bit something like that. Oh my goodness. I can't even get my hand in there. Maybe I should make a little more room. So I welded up that pulley on the transmission. I made that myself. <clears throat> Didn't do a very good job on the welds, but hopefully it'll hold. And I have a three inch pulley here and a five and a half inch pulley down on the transmission. So that'll give me a little bit more torque and a little bit less speed. So I've got it geared down not quite halfway. I was going to go for like a 3 inch here and a 6 inch down there to gear it 50% or half half speed twice the torque. But the 5.5 inch pulley is kind of nice and it's really damn close to 6 inch and I'll get a little bit slightly more speed, slightly more than half. And I've got ranges here so with the, if I put this in first gear and plus I have the gear down here, she'll probably have lots of torque in first gear and ranges so maybe hopefully it'll shift too like hopefully it'll shift on the fly with no clutch or with just the centrifugal clutch because that would be awesome frig last thing I did was made an access hole here for the belt and the clutch and I think the motor is going to come up to tighten the belt because I'm just going to work with that belt that I have there and there's not much room between the engine crank pulley, or it's, yeah, the engine pulley and the transmission pulley. So I'll probably end up lifting it up to tighten the belt and cause some clearance or make some more clearance there, which is fine. And I can even uh, I can even put a cover back over that again too. 
later on if I have to or if I need to or if I want to depending on the height and stuff I'm guessing it would have to be round to compensate for the clutch but what I want to do next is I want to build another hoop from somewhere around that bolt somewhere around that corner to that corner and that'll support the steering column and I don't know possibly possibly tied into the roll cage possibly windshield I'm not sure but I definitely need a hoop here to support the steering column and it might have to be tipped back a little bit on an angle similar to the similar to this part of the cage here and um, I've got an, an idea because I don't have a tubing bender or uh, I don't really have much way to make a cage so I had an idea to possibly use an anti sway bar because they're about they're about that wide and uh, it should be tall enough if I can get a good anti sway bar with the right dimensions I might be able to use one for the dash hoop or the column support hoop whatever it is friggin milk crate <clears throat> what do you think you are a seat or something yeah I was sitting on the milk crate to mock up the the length for this where the seat might go and pedals and stuff and uh, the next upcoming hoop for the to support the steering column I haven't got a whole lot done or a whole lot to report on but today I made this it's the brass uh, pilot bearing out of the the back of the engine well what normally goes in the back of the engine and a u-bolt from a drive shaft universal <laughs> and there's underneath here uh, see my fingers there's two nuts under there and yeah that's the pulley that I made from the clutch from a 14 spline clutch hub had to take the clutch all apart. That's the hub that's designed for the clutch, which is designed for the shaft. And I just welded the pulley on there. And there's a belt here. This belt is going to be driven by the engine and centrifugal clutch. I welded in this plate here. I know my welds are not the greatest, as usual. Uh, I welded this plate in here, and I made these friggin' motor mounts. And, uh, that's about it. Had a, had a visitor today, and we got the old 83 Firebird fired up. I don't know, I think he's interested in that car, but... That's one reason why I didn't get a lot done today. Aside from, I'm a, I'm a friggin', I'm slow. I take my time at this stuff anyway. Well, boys, I, uh, I made some friggin' rubber, little rubber motor mounts. And I've bolted her down. I don't, it's only temporary for now because I need to do some alignment on the pulleys and whatnot. Yeah, I have to do alignment and tensioning and all that stuff. But temporarily, I got her bolted down. Bolted right friggin' on there, boys. So now I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it shaking around or when I've 
pull start it. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> the motor moving on me. It's not going to go anywhere now. And let's see. It's it's cold. The exhaust is cold. Everything's cold. It has it's not been running uh, any time. I had it running like friggin' hours ago, but it seems to be since I cleaned the carburetor, it seems to fire up first pull every time. Let's try it. Even with the rubber motor mounts, it still vibrates a lot. But I got some stuff just sitting here, so it's vibrating. That's uh, first first gear. Second gear, third, third gear, neutral, I'm gonna have to work on the idle, clearly. But I can do that. I know how to do that. Focus, focus. That little plastic screw, that's your idle, idle stopper. I don't know if there's an idle jet or not. But yeah, I drilled the holes and I made the motor mounts. I'm going to have to do some, uh, I think I'm going to need two of these. Yeah, it's a little bit stiff. But the motor is mounted now. It's bolted down. Had to raise it up a little bit. About Raise it up about an inch. And there's a washer on this side for to get the angle of the drive shaft. <clears throat> and there's rubbers there too, like a rubber mount. And these these C channels or these whatever they are, they're just bolted down. They're not welded on, which is good because they're removable. And the belt's nice and snug. We just had it running a minute ago. Might run it. If it'll run. <laughs> That's the first time it didn't start first try for the camera. got to do something about that too, that grommet, that rubber. Is it going? Yep. Friggin' right. There she goes. That's just, oh wow. Well, I mangled it up pretty good, but that's just the transmission seal.
So I'm going to go down to CarQuest and get a new one and just pop it in there. And all it is is like thin sheet metal with a rubber inside and a spring. So it should be pretty easy just to tap a new one in there. But I think she was in need. And that actually, that'll give us better room to try the drive shaft too. Yeah, see how far up it goes in there. Yeah, make sure it'll go in there. Mm -hmm. The focus on that friggin' thing sucks. Yeah. Sometimes if you tap it, it'll refocus automatically. There you go. And it's mm -hmm. dark too, but that's good enough. You know, that seal is pretty mangled. <laughs> that's definitely like I was leaking. Yep. Try that drive shaft there now. That thing of a jangle goes on that thing of a jangle right there. Freaking it, right? Just, just like that, kind, something. <laughs> so the, the rear end is from a Ford Ranger, which seems uh, adequate, considering I call this the Redneck General Ranger. And that piece there is off of a Ranger shaft. And it bolts onto the yoke with these 12.12 .12 millimeter fancy pants bolts. And the shaft and the transmission are GM. And the shaft is over yonder. Wait, no, that's not the shaft, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that shaft has one and an eighth inch caps, and they're completely different than the Ford Ranger. But thanks to friggin' CarQuest, we got this. This thing. And it's a U joint with like Chevy caps on, on one cross, and it's got Ford caps on the other cross. So it's made for doing friggin' majangled shit like this. Made for redneck. <laughs> yeah, usually they have either inside or outside clips. This one has both. Alright, sorry about that, my phone rang. Anyway, usually they either have either have inside clips or outside, but not both. This one has both. And it's it's narrow this way and it's wide this way like a cross and it has inside clips here for the Chevy shaft and it has outside clips here for the Ford shaft which is awesome nurse frig we had a hell of a time for taking the getting that uh, yoke piece and the other the other u-joint out but now we're gonna put it back together like Humpty Dumpty Friggin' professional mess maker here again. Anywho, big big thanks to friggin' Austin the Tubes fan for coming by and helping me. And uh, we just finished getting this joint in, this new U joint in here. And it's, it's the one with the. It's a Chevy shaft and a Ford yoke, and there's two different crosses on the U joint. And uh, it's quite the unique, quite the unique junk as usual going on around here. Junk you don't see every day. The friggin' types of shit I do, boys, you don't see that types of shit every day, I tell you what. <laughs> anyway, we got the Ford yoke and the new U-joint, and we did it with a, we did it with the hammer and the vise and the anvil. And it was tricky. I had to cut one of the U-joints right out with a torch. There's one of them. <laughs> Since I'm working with, like, used junk, one of them was seized in there. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the one in the Chevy shaft. The old one. I had to torch it out, pound it out. Anyway, got it. Everything's good. We're about to get shafted. I'm about to get shafted here, boys. So, uh... This end here obviously slides in the back of the transmission. Oh, 
that reminds me, I need to put the new seal in. Better do that right friggin' now before I forget. Well, so much for uh, friggin' zero dollar for DIY junk buggy. Because I had to buy stuff. Well, I chose to buy a new seal. That's kind of it's kind of important to me to have the have the gearbox in good working condition and not leaking all over the friggin' place. Beg my pardon. <clears throat> so I gotta tap that in there. They're really easy. There's a steel on the on the outside and it's just like a press fit. So all I have to do is just tap it in. It just presses in there. The hardest part is getting the old one out. The old one got pretty mangled taking it out. I, j I didn't really care about taking it out, so I just stuck a screwdriver in there and pried it out and pretty much mangled it, but it was already mangled, so zero fox. So, this is I think this is the first time I've actually spent money on this project. It's supposed to be the mostly from junk, so I'm not saying it's supposed to be free, but it's pretty... Uh, I'm using mostly recuperated, salvaged stuff from the junkyard, so the only thing I've had to buy so far is the U-joint, which is, I could have made a shaft, I could have welded a Ford shaft and a, and a Chevy shaft, I could have welded, I could have made a shaft, but I chose to go for the U-joint, the new U-joint, because it needed one on that end anyway. And the seal and the U-joint, gasoline, which isn't really a big cost. And there was one other thing. Oh, the wire for the welder. Well, I got the new seal in there. I didn't want to dent it or anything, so I used this uh, chunk of aluminum, this little I-beam here. And I just put it up against the flat and I tapped on the aluminum so it would go nice and flush all the way around and tapping it with a hammer I didn't want to dent it or make it out of shape so I just used this chunk of aluminum it's soft and nice and flat and straight so just like brand used brand used friggin seal on there so now I'm gonna put the shaft in I think she's I think we're good I got the shaft here the front joint is uh that front U-joint, excuse my focus, that front U-joint is previously enjoyed, but it's fine. Actually, that's a that joint is Tefloned in there. So that's probably the original, one of the original joints, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's good and tight. So I got a brand new joint in the back there. It's that crazy fancy joint that goes from Ford to Chevy. Two different size caps. And yeah, time to put her in, boys. Well, I'm pretty uh, pretty happy with the progress. I know it doesn't look like much, but I'm pretty happy with the progress yesterday and today. The motor is bolted down into her final destination there. And... Uh, <clears throat> Shout out to Austin for helping me. Frig, that was awesome. Or is Frig got some, got some friggin' help and some inspiration here to, to keep on trucking. So the belt's nice and tight. The engine is on a slight, slight angle. Uh, very similar to the transmission, just slightly angled. The Honestly, everything worked out really good on the drive shaft. Aside from the fact that I had to get a custom U-joint. Uh, everything worked out really good. Like the angles, there's there's no uh there's no interference here. This here, um I might notch it because it's kinda close. It's not uh Right now it's not touching, but it's really, really close. 
and as you can see I had already planned on notching it anyway uh, yeah I drew those notches in a long time ago I didn't realize that the pinion was slightly offset like the center pot is not in the center it's closer to the passenger side but that's okay because all my pinion angles and uh, universal angles are pretty damn good <laughs> Pretty damn good. The shaft is in. The U-joint is new. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of backlash in the in the in the center pot, or maybe the axles. There's a little bit of backlash there, but that's okay. That's kind of typical for an automotive application, I guess. Uh, I need to put gear oil in here, and it's going to be something thick, like maybe 8090, ADW90. I'm not sure what they recommend in this transmission. I'll have to check. I know the Borg Warner T5s, the aluminum case Borg Warner, like in, they use in the 80s, they took ATF. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure this one takes gear oil. So, I prefer to have something thicker in there like gear oil. But I'll do some investigation probably tonight and find out what type of fluid it takes because I need to fill it up. That's the filler plug right there. And there's a drain plug somewhere down lower. So when I fill it up, it'll be filled up to there. Maybe maybe I can get a little bit more than that in there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There seems to be a bolt up here, but I don't think that's a filler. That's I better not mess with that. So that's the filler plug there. And there's a drain down lower. Some words. The friggin' motor is bolted down, the training's bolted down, the belt is tight, the clutch is working, the transmission is working. We got four wheels and four gears. Drive shaft, the whole drive line is, is pretty much done. Rear end, drive shaft, transmission, engine, everything's running and working. But I have no brakes and no seats. <laughs> Leave it to me to build the drive line first. I kind of needed to, anyways, because. I wasn't sure about if I would need like a, a tunnel in between the seats and the shifter and I sort of had to put the drive line in first anyway. But I'm glad that glad that everything's in and everything worked out good. Worst case scenario, I notch that for for suspension because when the suspension collapses a little bit, it might the drive shaft might come up a little bit, so I can notch that, or I can completely notch it like this, and then just put a piece over the top. I'm not sure. I might be able to notch it completely and build a drive shaft loop, or notch it completely and put a floorboard over top. I should probably notch it somehow, or notch it completely, and then put another one over the top, or, or an angle iron over the top. But the, the suspension does not move a lot back there. It'll probably move a few inches. It might not flex a lot. It is a lot softer with the mono leaf. But the shaft all the way up here, it does. It moves very little up here. It might move a bit out there, but up here it's very minimal. So things are going good. Slowly but surely. Definitely slowly, but definitely surely. I was tightening up the drive shaft bolts at the back on the rear end and the the thing was trying to drive away. <laughs> I was putting a clockwise torque on it and that's the the engine turns clockwise and the transmission and that's how you go forward so yeah